Great. Thank you, for, thank you everybody for coming. I'm Joanna Hodorowska, Nutrition in Motion. And the talk today is about finding your sparkle and shine from inside out. So it's trying to make that connection between what you're eating, how you're feeling, how you're feeling, how it affects the way that you eat, how holding on to negative energy and, and fears and the feeling of shame and guilt can actually keep you from sparkling and shining from outside. Sometimes what's going on inside, either internally in the, in the, in the body or internally in the mind, actually contributes to some of those physical symptoms on the, on the exterior. And based on how sometimes we get, um, how we're raised, we sometimes take in things that feel painful and we feel wounded and we develop issues based on those wounds as we, as we get older. And part of my history is I had adrenal exhaustion 15, no, 17 years ago. It seems like it was, um, so it, when, I, when I had my adrenal exhaustion, I basically allowed my body, uh, I ignored that my body was systematically shutting itself down. I had to learn how to eat because basically I had gone from an athlete, I had done an Ironman distance triathlon, which I don't know if you're familiar with, and with triathlon, but Ironman distance is a two and a half mile swim followed by a 112 mile bike, followed by a 26.2 mile run. And put that all together and uh, you know, you're, you're, you become an Ironman. So it's a great thing, except that that was part of what led me to get adrenal exhaustion. So I had finished my event in August, uh, and by February, I couldn't get out of bed. I was sleeping 11 hours a night. I had no ability to remember anything. We're talking short-term, long-term, and I would just basically drag myself through the whole day, and I thought, well, what the heck? This is, I'm supposed to be an athlete. Now I'm, I, you know, here I did a whole Ironman event under 12 hours, which, just so you know, that's actually pretty good. So, um, and being that I was a competitive athlete, I had to do pretty good. I couldn't just, you know, finish it. I had, to, I had a, 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 that time goal of under 12 hours. But my body was systematically falling apart and I ignored it. And the mind is such a powerful thing that if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. So I didn't mind and I had my blinders on and I had my goal and I just kept going. And I kept going like that with work. I went that way with, with my athletics. I just kept going and going and going until all of a sudden I couldn't go anymore. And then I had to figure out, well, who the heck am I? What makes me happy? What makes me sparkle and shine from inside out? So I had to relearn how to eat and how to actually put nutrients into my body. How, what foods are actually making it worse? What foods are going to help me feel energized and not continually spike, the drop, spike and drop my blood sugar so that I'm constantly just feeding um, the, the blood sugar fluctuations. I needed nutrients and my body needed them, and, but my brain didn't know what was going on. So part of my, how I got here to my sparkle and shine is I had to work on a lot of those things on the inside. About 13 years ago, I started this business and, and I was working primarily doing holistic nutrition because I learned that the body can heal itself given the right tools. The nutrition was just one of the tools. How I dealt with stress was another, another tool. But there's so many moving parts and pieces that when I get, I get frustrated with the, with the nutrition industry oftentimes because everybody thinks that everybody's the same. Well, guess what? We're not. If I worked with all of you or each of you, I would be working on 20 different plans because each of you might have a general uh, plan that might kind of work, but then I have to factor in the emotional status. Then I have to factor in the, the, the stress. How do you deal with stress? How are you exercising or not exercising? What do you do to actually calm the mind? Because when you're in that state of stress, you're usually not sparkly and shiny. You're usually just like running with your hair on fire and you know nothing you can't really do what you want to do because you're in a state of freneticism. So it's trying to find the foods that will actually help you calm down. It's trying to find the activities that help you calm down. But it's not about saying oh you have to go run on the treadmill. Personally if somebody gave me the, idea, the, the um, prescription of 
go run on the treadmill, I would walk out the door and never see them again. Because I really think it's a treadmill. It's, it's the most boring thing ever. It's, so it's not something that brings me any joy. So why would I want to do that? And, and OK, it's good for me, because somebody put the label that it's supposed to be healthy for me. But it's not healthy for me, because in my mind, I hate it. In my mind, I'm making myself do it, but I'm getting no enjoyment out of it whatsoever. So when I'm working with my clients, when I'm working with just me, it's, it's all about trying to help you find what makes your heart sing. What movement, when you were a kid, what did you love to do? But somewhere along the way, you were told you shouldn't do it. It's not something that you know, your mother believed in or, or somebody else, and you stopped doing it. But that's something that deep down inside, you want to do that again. So I try to reconnect you with some of those things that you love to do that you don't do anymore. And then when you're not giving that loving movement to yourself or those loving activities to yourself, sometimes it's you know, creativity. I had one client who you know, they felt most alive when they were dancing. So when they took the dancing out, their eating went haywire. And they were feeding the emotion of loss because they were wishing they were doing the activity, but the, the nutrition aspect wasn't really corresponding with what their, what their soul needed. So when I'm looking at nutrition, it's looking at what feeds you body, mind, and soul, not just what are you physically eating. But we're also going to talk a little bit about negative energy foods and high energy foods and kind of give you a little bit of an idea of how that affects the nutrition as well. Because a lot of the nutrition affects the, the emotions. The, what's going on, the imbalance in the intestinal tract, that can be a, count, a result of the food that you're eating. It could be a result of the stress that, that you have. Once, you're, once you have stress, then you have other emotions that come into play. And then you typically feed those emotions rather than really getting in touch with what's inside and what do you really need to do next. So if you have pain, if it's physical, then an anti-inflammatory diet is really helpful. When you're in pain, do you think you're sparkling, shining? No, you're usually like hiding in pain. And you've tried to put a mask on to say that you're, you're happy, but you're really not. You know, I grew up in a, in a family where strength was what, what you showed on the ex exterior. And as I, you know, my, my natural nature is to actually show my emotions. So I can basically get rid of them, talk about them, and move on, and be able to stay in the present so I can actually stay in the moment. For me, the athletics was a great escape from what I was doing, but it was also a great escape for me and from me. But that is when I felt most free. And even now, 27 years later, and I had a hip replacement a couple years ago, I still connect with, well, what can I do? When my hip was degenerating, again, I went from you know, what some of my friends called me as an uber athlete to I'm walking around with a cane. I had to basically um, swallow my ego and take the cane. But then once I started using the cane as my assistant, then I could actually walk a lot further than I could before without the pain. But then the pain was that bad, I had to figure out, OK, well, how do I get rid of the pain? Because I don't want to take Advil, because that's now destroying my liver. If I destroy my liver, then I'm going to do a whole bunch of other things to my body that I don't want to have happen. I'm going to create other imbalances. And then I'm going to feed myself foods that are going to heal the, or they, they don't really heal my, my pain. They actually are just um, taking care of my emotions temporarily. So it's a matter of, that, and that's where I used the path to heal work, was to understand where some of those emotions were coming that were driving some of the, the food choices. But also, on a physical level, I do nutrition response testing to identify, well, what foods was I eating that are actually causing my body to be in a state of inflammation? So in the process of having that hip degenerate, I knew exactly w when I ate something that didn't agree with me, because my hip would just hurt. And I would be waking up at 2 in the morning, have to take you know, two Advil and go back, go back to bed. That really wasn't a fun way, a fun way to live. But once I uh, implemented the, the anti-inflammatory diet in the two weeks before surgery, I created a whole hyper-anti-inflammatory diet. And 
made sure I eliminated all those foods that I had identified in the, in the three, four months earlier that were causing pain, that I was going to do that hyper-anti-inflammatory diet the two weeks before surgery when you can't do any anti-inflammatory supplements, you can't do any anti-inflammatory um, uh, like Advil or anything else like that. So within two days of being on this hyper-anti-inflammatory diet, all my pain went away. And even though I had bone on bone and a completely you know, destroyed um, joint, I had no pain. So I maintained that, you know, it's been now three years, and I've pretty much maintained that same kind of, of regimen because it just makes me feel better. You know, so when I'm working with clients, it's about trying to help you feel better and help you honor what your body needs and help identify what, what's the trigger for the foods that you're eating. It's not to say that pizza is a bad food. It, but if it's causing you inflammation and causing you other pain or you're eating it, you know, that's the only thing you're eating, then you have an imbalance in, in what you're choosing and you're not necessarily getting the nutrients that your body is wanting. Does that make sense? So if anybody has any questions, you can ask the, the questions as, as they come up. I gave you a little handout. Um, so there's a couple questions on there that's just kind of to, to ponder. You know, when you're sparkling and shining on the, on the exterior, you know, when you, th when you think about what that description is, it's you've got glowing skin, you've got beauty, but beauty is really from inside out. Uh, you've got confidence, you've got surety, uh, you've got control, you, or you feel like you've got control, like anything that you want to do, you can actually go, go after. Um, you have love of self, you have love of life. Th that's what, what I, want to help people do is reconnect with that love of life but it starts with love of self and honoring what your needs are and when you're looking at the at the back side of of that sheet there's a little chart and you can see th there's there's four categories there's the nutrition there's the emotions there's the um the the physical and the and the spiritual they're all kind of connected with with nutrition so you can either feed yourself love and then your food ch your food actually changes because the more you love yourself the more you choose foods that honor you the more you love yourself the more you choose activities that honor you the more you love yourself the more you communicate with others so that you can ask for your needs to be met and you don't feel guilty about getting your needs met. You don't give all your time to everybody else and give all your love to everybody else. The most important person to give love to is yourself. And if we're all a bundle of energy, then you don't want to send all the energy someplace else because then there's none left for you. If you've got some kind of a physical condition, we're all energy. So if you're eating negative energy foods, your body's wasting energy or being drained of energy because of those negative energy foods rather than choosing the higher energy foods. So I do this, th this technique called nutrition response testing, and I don't know if anybody's familiar with nutrition response testing. Uh, it's basically kinesiology and muscle testing. So if somebody wants to come up, I'm going to do just a little, a little show and tell. Either one. So I'm just going to do just the, the, the basic test. Um, and where's your belly button? Right there. OK. So i just making sure that close your eyes and open. And pinky and thumb together here. And open your eyes. OK. So most people think of, of sugar as um, a high energy food, right? It's a, well, it's a high calorie food. It's not necessarily a high energy food. So we're going to, we're just going to hold on to that. But I want you to see this. Can you see, I'm only pushing with one finger and her arm stays up. So this is me testing the, the central nervous system because we're testing the, the energy of the body. Now if I have you hold on to the sugar, I'm still pushing down with that one arm or one finger and her body won't, react because all the energy is being drained in, into by the, the sugar. If I give you, this is maple syrup. 
And again, I can just keep my hand there and you're, you're, you're fine. Honey? And that one's okay too. Now, if I give you, whoops, I have to take something out of here. I have little treats in here. So that's part of the experiment too. So this is, I'm putting collard greens on her. And now you're actually stronger than you were before. Can you feel it? Yeah. So now if I add the sugar with the collard greens, that's, that's where the energy stops. So we went from really strong and high. That was actually stronger than where you were to start with. And now that's, it's, it's the same pressure, but now the, the body just doesn't have the right energy. So you can combine a really high energy food with a low energy food. Thank you. Um, but you're still going to want to try to include more of the high energy foods. So I do this with, with most of the foods because it just shows you that um, you want to include more of those high energy foods. And it happens to be that collard greens, you know, and any, most of the green vegetables, they're really high in nutrients and pretty low in calories. So it's not really about counting calories, it's looking at what's the energy of the food. I test all the grains because many people don't, don't realize that wheat can be a negative energy food for them. If it's a negative energy food, then it's going to make your body hurt in more ways than one. And it can affect the brain. It can affect the brain function. And, um, and it, it can affect your moods. It can totally spike that blood sugar if you're not balancing the meals properly. So it, there's a lot of things that are associated with some of the food items, but you want to take a look at all those aspects and include the high energy foods more than the low energy foods so that your body works better. And as you get older, the, the wiggle room, basically, of margin, the margin of error gets smaller. So you have to be a little bit more precise. Does that make sense? So most people, as we get older, we do less activity. But we end up eating the same way. But sometimes when you're eating those negative energy foods, it's kind of like the, the cup spilleth, spilleth over. Well, I never had this problem before. I never had that symptom before. Well, you've been doing it for 20 years. You've been doing it for 30, maybe 40, maybe 50 years. Well, eventually, if you're, if you're continually doing these negative energy foods, you're slowly breaking down the body on a cellular level inside. And then when you finally have a symptom, you've already been breaking down for, you know, however many years you've been, been eating that, that food. So when I do the testing and identify a food, it's not because I'm trying to be nasty and say, you know, I'm, I'm being mean, I'm taking away your favorite food. No, I'm going to try to help you feel the best you can possibly feel because that's really what we want to do, right? So the nutrition has to be one of the elements that, that you look at. Uh, um, the next part is the, the, the emotional status. You know, where, when's, what stresses do you have? When did your symptoms start? Was there a stressful uh, scenario that happened at the time? When I had my adrenal exhaustion 17 years ago, I had to look at that stress. I had to be, I had to be real with me. You know, I had to find out who I was. And that's, a, that's what I help my clients to do is to find out, well, who are you all about and what are you meant to do? Are you trying to be you or are you trying to be the person that your mom or your sister or your friend or other people think that you want to be? Because that doesn't allow you to sparkle and shine. That, that makes you feel guilty that you're not doing something, but it makes you feel empty and unfulfilled. And then when you're feeling empty and unfulfilled, you typically f choose those low energy foods for that uh, immediate gratification because it makes you feel better. But then when you ate that ice cream, did it really make you feel better? Well, it made you feel better when you ate it, but probably the next morning, now you feel guilty. I shouldn't have done that. Man, I'm such an idiot. Why did I do that? But is that, go is that providing self-love to you? Probably not. That's actually giving you those <coughs> negative cues, and then you start, you're going to start that cycle that next morning of you've already berated yourself. You already don't think you're that good of a person, so now you're going to most likely choose some of those low energy foods and the sugar and the weed and, the, and it usually comes in the form of a donut or a cookie or um, a candy bar and it makes you feel good temporarily but not really. Does that make sense? So it's looking at all those aspects because 
when are you, how are you going to sparkle and shine if you feel guilty and shameful and, and you're not doing the things that you love to do? You, you want to really reconnect to one of those things and really have a conversation with yourself. That's where I do a lot of the, the path to heal work, the energy work, to help identify where are some of those fears of being yourself. Where do, where do they lie? Where do they come from? And then we use the essential oils and, and, uh, and tuning forks and gemstones to basically erase that, that fear, erase that negative energy, and help raise your vibration to unconditional love. Because you, you want to love yourself so that you can share that love with others. And what, are we, what have we always wanted from childhood? We just want to be loved, right? But we, ended up, we end up being the last people to love ourselves. And that's the first person we need to start to love is ourselves. And asking for help is not a, a sign of selfish or um, a sign of weakness. It's, it's that the beginning of giving and receiving. So you can open that, that, that doorway to giving and receiving. We're not meant to do it all by ourselves. We're meant to actually ask other people for help. You know, you can stay isolated and eventually you might figure it out, but you need other people to, to help you reconnect to who you are, what you're meant to do, how, how to eat to match your constitution, and then use the tools to help um, erase some of those, those fears so that you can step into your shiny and so you can actually basically find that inner peace, find that, that flow, and then you automatically have that outer glow or as I call it, the sparkle and shine from inside out because you're doing everything that, that shows that you honor you, you love you, and you love all the people around you too, and your whole life becomes something that's beautiful rather than something that you dread. And then you don't use all the food to self-medicate. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anybody have any questions? So on the, on the front of that sheet, on the back, I had told you that there's a, there's a little connect, connect the dots. On the front, you know, these are just some scenarios. You know, when, when you look in the mirror, what's the dialogue that you have with yourself? Are you, are you actually giving yourself self-love? So I kind of want to, you know, see what happens when we don't do self-love and, uh, and, and only see our flaws. We'll typically go and eat and self-medicate to, to make up for those flaws. Or we'll do something, you know, some destructive behavior like endurance sports or, you know, endurance dieting. You know, some, something extreme that it seems like it's a really good idea and it would really help, but it's really a way to punish yourself for, doing, for being who you are. Well, you shouldn't be punishing yourself for who you are. You should be celebrating who you are. You know, the more you celebrate, the more people celebrate with you. The more you reveal some of the, the, the pain that you have, the more love and support you actually receive. And that's something where, you know, if you're, if you're raised to be independent, you're not, a, you're not supposed to ask for, for support. You're not supposed to ask for that stuff. You're supposed to have that exterior strength and not the, not the internal strength. You know, so then you're cowering because you're constantly, you know, trying to please somebody else and you're trying to do something that, that, you know, so-and-so said this was a good idea for me, so I'm going to do that. But then you don't feel comfortable with it. It grates, it grates on you. And then, you know, you end up cowering as opposed to glowing. You know, the people that are, that are glowing, they're doing more of the things that they love. And the people that are surrounding them are doing the things that they love. And sometimes they do the things that they love together, which is even better because the, it's always more fun with more people, right? So it's, it's trying to find that support team and trying to find where, where are you not providing yourself self-love. So and the first one, you know, when you look in the mirror, what do you do? There's four, there's four options. On the second one, you know, when you see somebody who basically looks like they, 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 they got it all going pretty, pretty good, what do you do? You kind of look at them like they must be on something. That, that's not real. Nobody can do that. Somebody must have paid them a lot of money to walk around like that. You know? And a lot of times what we do is we, we get jealous of these people and, and we tell ourselves, well, we can never do that. 
we don't ask them, like, well, what are you doing? How did you get there? We just want to say, well, that's, that's not plausible. I think I'll just go and um, have some ice cream. I think I'm going to go shopping. I think I'm going to go, you know. So you end up doing something to medicate the, the, the feelings, but what's the underlying emotion underneath that needs healing? That's, what I, that's where the, the path to heal work comes in because it helps to clear that, that memory so it no longer becomes a trigger. When you have a conversation with somebody, if, if a negative emotion comes up and you start feeling angry, well, it's a trigger from, from an earlier childhood, typically a childhood, as I call it, wound. And we just need to understand it and let it go. So that's where the, the, the essential oils, along with the Path to Heal work, help to, to basically do that. So then you can still choose you and not have to worry about that person's bugging, bugging me because of you know, X, Y, Z issue. They said such and such. You don't, you don't have to be triggered anymore. As long as you can understand the trigger, then you don't end up using the food as the, as the self-medication. You don't use the, 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 the wrong exercise to or too much exercise to self-medicate. Because we want you to run to you, not run away from yourself. Does that make sense? If somebody gives you a compliment, then I think this is a really common one. And for years, for years, on the outside, it looked like I had all my stuff going. You know, like I had it all together. And that was great. But on the inside, somebody gives me a compliment. Oh, you look really nice today. And I'm like, are you on drugs or something? What do you see? Like, I don't see that. And I would just negate every single compliment that somebody was giving me. And even last year, somebody gave me some compliment. And I thought, you know, I could now at least I was able to accept the compliment. Because if you think of a compliment, that's a gift of, of some, from somebody else. They're giving you the gift of noticing something great about you. They're seeing the beauty that's already in you. But we don't see the beauty in ourselves. And I didn't see it for a long time. And somebody last year gave me some compliment. And I can't remember exactly what it was. But it was something where I thought, wow, why can't I see myself like that person sees myself? And that was enough to be able to help me shift into that place where I could start really accepting it on a soul level. At my core, I could accept those, those compliments. But beauty is everywhere. And, and you want to be with people that see the beauty in you, not look at your flaws and tell you what's, what's wrong. But a lot of times, those, those flaws that other people are pointing out, those are based on somebody else's fear. Because they have some kind of pain, so they're trying to unload that pain on you. And if you can see it from that perspective, then it's a lot easier to understand that most of those comments have absolutely nothing to do with you and you don't have to react. Because as soon as you react, now you've got another emotion that came up. And that's a trigger. And typically that trigger causes all sorts of digestive disruptions. It causes all kinds of stress. And then it causes all the um, emotions to flood and you typically choose the food to self-medicate again, right? So can you see the, the pattern? So you've got to be able to look at, at the body as a whole and see which part needs to be addressed first, which pieces need to be put together so that we feel whole, so we feel inner peace, and we're feeling great about ourselves. The more love we can give ourselves, the more sparkle and shine we have on the outside, the more sparkle and shine we have inside. So it's really trying to just balance those, those um, understand the emotions, understand which foods work best with you, understand which, um, which foods might be disrupting the, the internal balance, and maybe it's the emotions that are actually causing a disruption with the, with the digestion, because stress always makes everything worse, right? So it's trying to understand, well, OK, where's the stress coming from? Now how do we fix it? So my job is not to fix it for you, but to empower you to find, find the answer. Because we all have the answer within us. I'm just the person to help you find that answer so that you can sparkle and shine from inside out as well. Does that make sense? So I have a, um, a, we have a table uh, in the next hall over. I do custom essential oil blends. And those can be, you can name it whatever you want, and it will have exactly what essential oils will help you. If, you're, if you feel like you're chronically anxious or you feel like you're triggered, 
um, or even if you just feel sad. I had to make my, my blend in, in winter. Somebody asked for the, my, my winter mojo, you know, because you kind of get into that funk in, in the middle of December. And as I was making hers, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make that. And then that was like the blend I was, I was making for everybody in December. And everybody's was totally different except for two oils. And Melissa was one of them, which is the oil of light. So it's about seeing the light in, even though in your, you're in the darkness of winter, you know? And it really did make a huge difference. And then ginger, uh, on an emotional level, that's all about being able to digest life better. So when you put those two together, it was great. But I probably made 20 of them in that month. And each one, that was the only thing that was common was those two oils. Everything else was totally different. So the custom blends, really, they, I pick them so that you can, so that they do what they need to do for you. And even if you just give me a name, um, it, it's, just, it's really amazing what, what combinations come up with. So we have those at the table, and I think they're, I think they're $20 for, for a rollerball. And, uh, and then on the back of your sheet, I ha the one program that I have that I want to talk to you about is the Be Whole program, which combines basically everything that I talked about today. So it's got, there's six sessions in there. It combines the nutrition. It combines some of the, um, the Path to Heal energy work. And it really basically, if you put the all three together, you make progress a lot faster. If you just do one at, one, one at a time or did none of them, it could take you three, four years to get to where you want to be. This actually helps to really speed up the progress in, in the three to four months that we work together. Anybody have any questions? You talked a little bit about um, using food to medicate. You mentioned <coughs> it several times. Mm -hmm. Can you just expand on that when food becomes, when it's m not so much of a choice anymore because of the addictive nature of sugar and grains and willpower is kind of out of the question? Um, so it's more than just making that choice not to self-medicate. Well, so when, in terms of food cravings, I do, I do refer to Doreen Virtue's book, uh, food, uh, I think it's called Constant Cravings. Mm -hmm. So she gives you a lot of, a lot of ideas of what the, the probability of the, of the problem is as, as far as what emotion you're dealing with and where you're not giving yourself self-love. So I sometimes use that. So let's, I have a client that just came in, and we've been doing nutrition work, helping balance the blood sugar, put the meal combinations together better. And she's feeling a lot better. And then she told me the other day that she's like, well, I never told you, but I, eat, I drink Coca-Cola every day. And sometimes I drink two. Well, what time of day do you drink it? Pretty much in the morning. And it's not the caffeine, but if you, if, if you read the book, part of it, is the, there's a part of needing exhilaration. So she needed that exhilaration because she's still not feeling fulfilled going to her work. Not that she doesn't like her work, but there's something in life that she's not connecting to, so she's using the soda to get that exhilaration. I could give her all the, all the nutrition response testing and, and knowing that you know it's a negative energy food, but you can't just do that because you're not going to overcome the issue. It's about understanding, well, what's the driving force? Is it, is it just the mismanaging of blood sugar or is there something else driving that? When you're talking about sugar and, and wheat, a lot of times once you balance the blood sugar, a lot of the cravings go away. If you're, if you're stressed and overwhelmed, you typically will crave pretzels or chips or something crunchy. Rarely do you crave the crunchy um, carrot or celery or sugar snap pea, but those could be good alternatives for that crunchy, um, the, the need for crunchy. But if you're constantly feeling overwhelmed, no, um, it's, you can balance the blood sugar, but that craving is still going to keep coming up because it's not about how you balance the blood sugar. It's not about choosing a negative or positive um, energy food. It's really the emotion is there and it's not being and it's just triggering what the body really needs it needs some self-love from a different direction does that make sense is that enough explanation 
So a lot of times I have to look at both the, the physical aspect, are we balancing the blood sugar? What else is going on? And did we put a label on that? You know, chocolate is one of those, those foods that um, people say, oh, chocolate's bad for you. Well, no, chocolate's good for you. Well, no, you know, it goes back and forth. But when I do the testing, if it's a dark chocolate, it's probably not the problem. But if you're, and you're, if you're eating a lot of it, well, if that's all you're eating, then we do have a problem. But if you're eating a couple squares a day, who cares, you know? I eat chocolate all the time. And I had to make peace with myself because, you know, when I'm happy, I eat chocolate. When I'm sad, I eat chocolate. When I'm depressed, I eat chocolate. When I, you know, when I get discouraged, I eat chocolate. You know, and, and the look, good thing is when I had my hip degenerating, it didn't come up as, um, as a problem food. But if I chose something uh, that had more sugar in it, then it, then it didn't agree with me and my hip hurt more. So uh, I, at one, some point, just had to realize that, you know, I'm eating the chocolate because I'm not honoring my need for this. But now that I know that that's what it is, now I've accepted it, now I've moved on, now I eat it and I enjoy the hell out of it. You know, so it's not that big of a deal. But I spent years being guilty about it and like, well, that doesn't help me because then I go eat more chocolate, you know. So, but in, for me, it doesn't make any difference if I take the chocolate out. It makes no difference in my weight, it, uh, none whatsoever. But it sure affects my, my well-being. And chocolate does have the antioxidants in it. It does have the magnesium in it. So magnesium is, a, is um, calming to the, to the muscles. And it helps with, with um, the electrical pathways of the central nervous system. So maybe, maybe it's not such a bad thing. But I have people that come up to me and go, oh, I eat way too much chocolate. Well, what's, what's way too much? Who put that label on there? So I, when I'm working with clients, I'm trying to erase those labels because it's really honoring what your body needs. You know, and if you recognize that, okay, I'm stressed, this is what I need. Well, maybe, maybe that isn't what you end up needing once you recognize that that's what it is. You know what I mean? There might be another solution to it. And sometimes the essential oils, if you're really that stressed, there's a half a dozen oils that'll calm you down, help you feel balanced. Um, and if you're depressed, there's, a, there's at least three of them that will energize you. So... It all just depends on what the situation is. Any questions? I think I'm going to wrap it up for now. Uh, if you want to contact me, there's, there's, my website is www.nutritioninmotion.net. You can set up a 15-minute session with me for free, even though I gave you, you know, 45 minutes now for free, I'm going to give you more free. So you can do that. There's two simple ways. One, just go to that website, and there's a little box that says click here for 15 minutes, and you can schedule that. Or you can, if you have your phone, you can actually just text for, um, NIM for Nutrition in Motion, the number is 15, and text that to 444-999. Thank you. What's your